So Definitely. it's culture. What's the what's the culture? Well, the the culture, right, of the is. Oh, but. Don't say that then, please. What, what are you gonna say? Like, Hold on. What are you, what are you gonna say? The, the culture is like they like abandon their kids, like oh. join gangs, and they commit crimes. Like not all of them. Obviously. Holy! It's just, just like went full blown racist. Hey, Tommy. What's up? What's going on? Hey, so I have a friend here um, who is more of a Trump supporter than a Biden supporter. I'm a Trump supporter. Well, you keep backing Trump. Um, and I'm trying to explain the um, racial indiscrepancies with, you know, it within the, the black community. And I've tried my hardest. Um, I've brought up the, um, uh, what's the word? Moderation rate of black people um, versus any other race of individuals. Um, and he brought up the fact that um, 1.850. Yeah. Um, I didn't say 1350. So, I said 1.8 million. Black people can... Here, you talk. Um, I, I can't explain any further. I'm just, I guess I'm just not educated enough, but it's really grinding my gears and hurting my heart. Uh, so. so we're just talking the discrepancy, the disparities between marginalized groups. Yeah, I mean, prior to that, I was um, trying to explain why Project 2025 was a terrible idea. Um, oh, and, yeah, and, it's a fascist manifesto, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So if you want to go in... Half bad, half good. Like, he said it's half no, bad, it's, half good. it's all no, bad. 40% good. Here, I would like for you to go into detail, good. if you don't mind. Um, okay. I would love for you to. Here, here, here he is. Say hi. Cool, so... Hello. What's your what's your issue with uh, you not understanding disparities between marginalized groups or? I don't understand. So Lexi is saying that, um, so 3,200 3, people, in general, were exonerated for for their crimes since twenty twenty two. Since twenty twenty two, right? So that black is people. so fifty three percent of those thirty two hundred were black people. Right, that is one thousand six hundred and ninety-six people that were exonerated. Right, it actually goes back further than that, but typically speaking, over half no, the people that exonerated are are black. Yes, black. I understand that, right? But she's saying that that percent matters for what were you saying? I was saying that that you shouldn't be looking at the numbers as a whole, um, rather than the percentage of people, um, just due to the fact that you know. People like these agencies that are working to exonerate people aren't going to be able to look at 1.8 million cases like he's claiming that there are. Um, it's a very slow process. Like on average, with Black people to be exonerated, uh, it takes approximately 14.2 years. So uh, that's yeah, what I would so, say. So yeah, so Black the the point that you're looking at when you're looking at you're so when you're analyzing systemic racism, you're looking at the dis disparities in different uh, racial groups. If race is is not an issue right if race is not an issue then we would see virtually no differences in the exoneration rates between races they're all treated relatively equal within the criminal justice system right um a good example of this would be like uh italians and um people that are italian and people that are irish are both white in america they both have very similar rates of you know a lot of it, I mean, it also depends on where they live, but a lot of it has very similar rates of crime, right? Uh, so when you start getting into like black people are more likely to be exonerated, about half of all people that are exonerated are people of color. Um, they are significantly more likely to be charged, significantly more likely to be wrongfully arrested. There is more uh, black prison population uh uh, as a representative of their race, I think it's about 36% of the prison population is bat black, even though only 13% of the population is, you see these disparities emerge where all things the same, they should be represented equal, but they're not. And that's what systemic racism is, is you're seeing these disparities in different uh, sec sectors. But crime isn't equal, right? So 6.8 million... Americans committed crimes in 2019, right? 4.7 million of those were white, 1.8 million were black or African American. And Where are you getting these numbers from really quick? Uh, I'm getting them from FBI.gov. 
Yeah, you, those are incomplete data sets. I, I, I understand that because, you know, it's to the government. Complete, the complete. government's right. draft. Right, but yeah. while you're trying to insinuate that somehow this has to do with their race, other things are much more likely the culprit because race is not an indicator of violent tendencies it's, or the tendency No, it is definitely, it is 100% culture is the, the factor of uh, whether you commit it's, crimes or not. It's culture? Whether you, that's what got me, man. I couldn't do it no more. So it's, it's culture. Right. What's the what's the culture? Well, the the culture, right, of the is. But don't say that, then, please. What, what are you gonna say? Uh, Hold on. What are you? What are you? The, the culture is like they like abandon their kids, like oh. join gangs, to make crimes. Like not all of them, obviously. Holy fucking shit. It's just, just like went full blown racist. Yeah, it's just not crazy. Are you full blown racist? Serious, sir? Higher chance that a black father will abandon. Do you know what? Oh yeah. I don't know how to do this, man. Is he? No, that's not true. That's 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 absolutely not true. Black fathers are more involved in their children's lives, regardless if they are in the home, than white fathers. That is a statistic that maybe he needs to look up. It is true. Like for example, yeah, a my dad, but, my dad being a black dad. I mean, yeah, and this and, is what you're and not crime getting. is predicate to on on proximity to poverty. Crime is poverty, sir. Not yeah, not th culture. This is what you're not getting. Well, he said and he was about to say that. Refuse as well. to understand is that you're pointing to like a small subset and generalizing an entire group. Um, but what I don't even know where to begin. What we watch is poverty abject poverty causes these things you are taking an environmental fallacy of which you're not even correct on but you are taking an environmental fallacy and applying it as being the truth as being an actual as being a representation of this community you said poverty like, does you, affect crime does it does right you are taking what's called you are taking hold on a second you are taking a group America that have been exposed to some really horrific conditions by people that are white and by America in general and you are taking the outcomes of those and then applying it to this community in general which is racist do you have a response I can't believe this man really said they abandoned their kids secrets you need a better friend like this person oh I would not even let this person in my house. I um, I am. I, I was trying to explain. I would, if you don't mind, going into more detail about the, the barriers that Black people face. Um, I mean, me Red myself. Um, oh yeah. Uh, me myself. I um, I, I was. I was trying to explain how. Because uh, he asked me, like, what do I go through on a daily basis? And, you know, me, myself, I'm very pale skinned. I'm a very pale black person. So I don't have, like, I can admit that I don't experience the same things that my father and my sisters and my siblings and that side of my family would experience on a day-to-day -day basis. But I do still experience some things. So I went into detail about that. And I tried to go into detail about things that my dad has told me that he's experienced um, like like my dad is a I tried I, like an example that I gave was my my dad is a very big man he's like six two and um he he looks sort of like scary um he's very one of the most tough individuals I know is also one of the most smart intellectual individuals that I know um but every time he gets pulled over by a police officer he starts shaking he is mortified and terrified and I told him about one of my cousins who um was pulled over by the police and asked for his license and registration and was um. Uh, S H O T for reaching into his glove box and grabbing his um, registration paperwork and unalived, unfortunately, by the police. Um, and that it has caused some um, uh, PTSD within my family. Um, and he, he, he said, and I quote, um, I would like to see the body cam footage and that threw me off guard. And so I would like for you to maybe explain why that affects the communities um, and, and why, like what other barriers there are that black people face that maybe I'm just not touching on. Holy smokes. I don't even know where to begin. Why the, f why would that be your first response? Like in any circumstance, why would that be your first response? Why the body? The Wait, we lost we lost my family friend to this thing. Eh, I want to see the evidence. How gaslighting is that? 
Uh, why, why is that your first response to asking? If you show me a racist cop, right, I will 100% back you and say- No, 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 no. See, I mean, this is, you have a really primitive understanding of how racism works. A really primitive understanding. And I need to put that home as best as I can. You have not a f***ing clue what you are talking about. And I want to make this clear. So maybe it shocks your conscience into not being you. Uh, your understanding of racism in this country is pathetically bad. It is not someone going, I'm racist. I'm going to do this to a person of color. We have scientists that have hooked up to people's brain scanners that show their reaction in situations where people are white and people are black and the fear levels that they have. And they show that people are far more fearful around people of color. That is ingrained into society. Okay, that is not someone going, I'm a racist. That is something that we have taught people over hundreds of years. Okay, we see disparities in every facet of life from housing, education, college, uh, the workforce, corporate workforce, you name it. There are disparities where black people have these barriers and can't get get through them. Mm -hmm. and, and I, I just to explain and I, just to point out just to point out the things that we see among the black community are more explained by socioeconomic issues and poverty because we also know that when you start comparing uh people that are white right they start ha that are that are more impoverished they start having similar outcomes they still have different outcomes because black people also have to deal with racism but we start seeing similarly but you're pointing to like a small amount of people and then representing an entire community of it. And that's a problem. Does that make sense? Cody? Kind of, right? Kind of. But also like, it we'll still, speak it's, up. still seems a cultural thing to me, right? Like the, for example, for example, the uh, disparity in the corporate workforce, right? It, I still believe that that is a cultural thing because they go to a, Why would that be a cultural thing that somebody wouldn't want a corporate job? What's more same, likely that someone wouldn't take a corporate job because of their culture or that they're inherently left out of it? So culture, culture really has just become another buzzword for race because yep. this isn't extended to virtually any other group except for marginalized ones in the United States. So you, do you disagree that there are, there are different cultures like that black Americans they they live in a different culture I, I, I don't think that there's 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 not a culture when it comes to crime right we wouldn't say well well look at well look like i've heard oh look at their music look at black people's music look at white people's music I right say, yeah i mean white people music is more like screaming and talking about stuff but you, you know, know who the biggest consumer of rap music is White, white people, white people. So why aren't white people more more violent than in your in your uh, explanation? Right, because according to your logic, they are experiencing and actively engaging in white, that white, so white, so called white, culture. White, white people do commit more crimes. And mm. not only that, in the yeah. '90s, it was but, proven on, in the congressional so hearings per, that rap music had anything saying, to do with activity. But you, what you were saying is, percentage wise, they aren't committing the same amount of crimes, according that's to you. Schmurder, please, please send to your for or, Cody, can I can I ask you a question real quick, man? Yeah, go ahead. So, can you can you come to the microphone? I don't yeah, I don't yeah. mean to to I'm ignore I'm secrets. I, I respect the shit out of secrets, but I, I wanted to have Thank a conversation you. with you. If if you if if the government were to make a law that said, hey, slavery is illegal, except if you're in prison, and then they made a bunch of laws to disproportionately affect black people, would you consider that law racist? Can you word it differently? I don't think I understand. So we have the 13th Amendment, right? It, yes, it, it abolished slavery except if it's for a punishment of crime. Yes. So if they have that law that says, hey, slavery is illegal, and then they make a bunch of laws that disproportionately affect black people who were just freed from slavery, and they make like loitering laws or, or uh, laws that say you can't be homeless that disproportionately affect people who were just freed from slavery, would you consider that a racist law? 
Of course, those are racist because you're, but you're also talking about Jim Crow laws that were all yeah, abolished. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. So, like from Jim Crow laws to twenty twenty four, you think things would be different, wouldn't you? The answer is yes. You, you yeah, think yeah, they'd be different, right, right? Yeah, yeah. You think, but you think if different. we can look at the prison population system and we can say, hey, there's thirteen percent of the population is black, but they have thirty eight point eight percent representation in this in the in the prison system, when every other race in the prison system has, is equal representation. So we have a white population of about sixty percent. It's about fifty seven percent in the prison population. We have an Asian population about uh, five or three to five percent. It's about two percent of those. So there's equal representation for every single race in the prison population until you get to black people. And black people is 13% of population in the country and almost 40% of population in the prison system. So you have to ask yourself, one, are black people in America, and only in America, because we don't see these, these representations anywhere else in the world. It's equal representation everywhere else in the world. So black people in America and only in America are exceptionally violent, or the laws in America disproportionately affect black people. Which one do you think it is? I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it's the laws that affect them. I would say it's the justice system as a whole affects them. Probably. Right. Would that be a part of the systemic racism in this country then? If it's the judicial system that disproportionately affects black people, would that be part of the systemic racism? I see your point. I, I understand now. I, I see I see where you're coming from. Okay. So black people in America are not exceptionally violent. It's no, just I don't, the I don't laws in America disproportionately affect them. So if white people commit as many they they commit as many crimes as black people, but black neighborhoods are over policed, they're going to catch more black people doing crimes than they would white people because the cops just aren't there to see the white people committing crimes. And I, I, but to that what, point, um, I want to add this too. Uh, to that point, I want to add this too. So you can link crimes to stressors, right? The amount of a stressors that affect a typical population, right? Yeah, and I, you I can't add on that. determine, but you can't determine who in that population is going to affect just that. When you add stressors to any given population, there will be more crime. We saw that through 2020 with the. In all of the United States, the crime rates went up, right? 2021, crime rates went up. They've started to go down, though. But um, through 2020, they were up, right? And that has to do with stressors, economic stressors, uncertainty, et cetera, et cetera. The more that you add to a population, the more likely there will be to be crime among that population. You can't determine who's going to commit the crime, just that there will be a statistical increase. That make sense? And so the black yeah. community in America has been given a shitload of stressors over and above every other group in the United States. But on top of that, that, there's also the targeting of people of color. They're more likely to be arrested, less likely to get parole, more likely to get uh, actually get jail time as opposed to suspended sentence, more likely to be wrongfully arrested. The list goes on. To that, I think the biggest stressor would be uh, financial because... I, uh, uh, you would think that the, the poorer an area is the, the higher the crime rate, like, right. Like in a trailer park, you're going to have fucking, you're going to have a, a meth trailer, right? Like in a, uh, section eight housing, you're going to have, you know, drug dealers. You're going to have like O block. You're going to have fucking murders, gangs, all that shit, even in white communities, not just, not just O block specifically. Right. I do think that, uh, that that is one of them but i also think that I, I i also think that it's the education system that is failing these kids right they are they are not pushing them to be their best right I, like I, I if you go to if you go to a like a suburban middle class white high school right you're going to see like they're pushing the they're like pushing these kids to do better and like get these like corporate jobs or whatever like go to college all these things but if you go to a, I would say if you go to a black neighborhood, they're like, oh, you should like try out for sports. Like you should be a, like, go to the Olympics, be a basketball player, be a football player. Like all the, like they're not promoting them to be like in a, the corporate workforce or in well, the how, workforce. How do you know this? How do you know these things? 
Go to go to a, go to an elementary school and ask and ask. Go to a white elementary school and ask, or predominantly white elementary school and ask so, the entire group of class what they want to be. I'm, in the I'm asking you about lawyer. black neighborhoods. Like how how do you know what black neighborhoods are trying to teach their children? I'm not saying you black neighborhoods. You say you're making a lot of generalizations about. You say you're making like a, a whole lot of wild generalizations about black people. Yeah, that's racist. That's that's like that's I'm just gonna say it. Like you're racist, as f dude. I, I, so I was explaining um, some part of like Project 2025, and that's what kind of led us into this conversation, um, how they're trying to um, uh, dismember the agencies that, um, the governmental agencies that um, have diversity and inclusion programs. Um, and so that's kind of where this conversation stemmed off of. Um, and he's for the dismemberment of these diversity and inclusion programs so i was trying to explain the importance of these things um i just don't think i was able to so if you guys want to try that route as well are you uh are you is he a republican i don't know are you more li i would consider myself more libertarian are you for well, getting rid of the electoral college i really don't i mean i know that they they decide the votes like they take into account the uh the uh majority vote in their state right but i don't really see a purpose for them like today but i also don't because if you do if you if you have a majority vote right you're gonna get voter fraud like even if it's minute right i'm not saying voter fraud is a deal right or it's like a big thing right but i'm saying like if you majority vote and the vote is off by like 20 votes like 20 i i would guarantee you 20 votes are easily fraudulent votes that's why i'm not i'm not really for majority vote unless it's verified so, like it's like a, not verified it's like 100 percent verified majority joke i'm down for that i'm not sure you answered the question that was weird no uh nutcracker appreciate the tip over on youtube back in the 90s as a teen i was pulled over by the police it was me and three black friends i grew up with the cop asked me to step out of the car he asked me if they were he asked me if they were being held against their will jesus so i I don't really know where I think to, it's, to go. I think it's interesting that you acknowledge the discrepancies that, that black communities have within the school system, but like you don't look further than that. And like, why are there discrepancies? 